I don't know. I didn't see you there. I was just reading about canon and music. Not those sort of canons. Canon with one N. I get it. Classical music can be intimidating. It requires a heck of a lot of listening and learning to be able to speak about it competently. Never mind some of the more snobby attitudes that go along with it, perhaps something for another video. But why is it so complex to learn? Because often we assume that there's a lot of music that people ought to know before they can really start to enjoy classical music. What is this list of music? I'm glad you asked. In this video I'm going to talk about the canon in classical music. What it is, the pros and cons, and what are possible alternatives. <laughs> If you look at any number of books aimed for people learning the fundamentals of classical music, for adults or children, you'll see the same faces included on the cover. Bach, Beethoven, Mozart, Brahms, Schubert, etc. on every book. Why is this? There are very simple pedagogical reasons, i.e. for the sake of teaching, that these composers were received positively during their lifetimes and after, and so were judged to be especially valuable. Anybody taking the precious time to learn about classical music ought to begin with these figures, goes the thinking. We could expand the list to include lots more names, perhaps a Premier League of maybe ten composers, then a second sports league, with maybe twenty or so more names, and then perhaps um, a, a first division of another fifty or so names. This is what we call the canon, this list. Jim Sampson writes in the Oxford New Grove Dictionary, the canon is a list of composers or works assigned value and greatness by consensus, claims for ethical qualities and a universal status occasionally cling to the term. Okay, there's a lot to unpack there, but that universal status bit is pretty important. The idea that these composers can speak for all the other composers as a kind of summary, but also can speak to anyone else in the world, no matter the audience, no matter their background. We use the canon, this list of composers, in teaching schools, college, university, etc., because it's an easy list. If new learners begin with this, they can quickly engage with lifelong fans of classical music, because these are generally pieces and composers that everybody knows. All of these composers were judged to be brilliant over the course of history, so why shouldn't we enjoy them now? Well... There are, of course, problems. Note of pattern of all the people featured on those book covers. Yeah, they're all dead white guys. Why is that an issue? Well, for what I hope are obvious reasons, it doesn't promote much of an image of um, inclusivity in classical music does it? The canon also promotes an air of objectivity, and there's nothing you can do about it. It suggests that this is an unchanging club of composers, and that we shouldn't question anything about it, just learn it. Best music, there's no if and buts about it, it's objectively the best. It's... Okay, I'm here to question it. It's what every musicologist should do. If learning the canon is the school or introductory level to classical music, Questioning the canon is the next level. The myth of the canon would have us believe that it is not affected by historical or social factors, that the music and composers included are in there because they are objectively the best, and it just so happens to be a coincidence, of course, that their racial and gender characteristics are reflective of the dominant qualities valued by wealthy Europeans from about the 17th century onwards. Further things follow from that myth. The canon would have us believe that there are simply no composers of colour or women during music history. A very basic examination could put paid to that. Take Joseph Pallon, Chevalier de Saint-Georges, for instance, or Florence Price. Evidence shows us very easily that it's not the case that music was utterly dominated by white European men 
all during this time. Far from it, but the overwhelming story we tell about classical music, the canon, suggests that it was. There's an even further level of myth, though, that canonic music is objectively good. Best. It's nothing to do with people's background, it's nothing to do with whether they're dead or white or European, it's just the best music. Taste in music is subjective, of course, it's down to each individual person. There's no way to measure the quality of music. Perhaps another subject for a video I've got planned. Informed experts can discuss things like composerly technique or different accomplishments, but it's still opinion. Expert opinion, not to be snubbed, but still opinion. If we accept the canon, we will come to believe that only the composers who wrote great music are included in textbooks, which is also why you know that they are great, because they're in the textbooks. You see the circular logic here. When somebody begins to move towards the more advanced level of study of classical music, the canon can become a kind of limit, an excuse not to investigate thousands of composers who aren't included in the canon. OK, what are some options to maybe move away from it? One, we could expand the canon. That is, we hang on to our old list of dead white guys, but also include people of colour, women, living composers, etc. I've got some experience in trying to expand canon. The composer I did my PhD on, Weinberg, was and is pretty unknown, but his music is being played more and more celebrated more often, slowly being included in lists of must hear composers, though not that that does anything to expand the diversity of the canon, I must admit. We could choose to expand the canon with more diverse composers, like Florence Price, for instance. Check out her third symphony. We could use diverse examples in teaching history or music theory. There are some problems with expanding the canon, though. It doesn't make the problem of the canon go away. It if anything, reinforces it as we try to just make it bigger. And really, who's got the time to go explore the recent fringe additions to the canon? Students and tutors want to get to the traditional important stuff. OK, there is the nuclear option. We could abandon the canon. This option is labour intensive. Teachers, tutors would use a large range of historical and theoretical examples that are entirely from non-canonic composers. Because this kind of curriculum and work hasn't entered the mainstream, it means that anyone wanting to do this has to do the work themselves. Teaching with the canon, though, is ready to go. No research required. And there's a few problems with the nuclear option as well, much as I like it. First, canonic music can still be pretty wonderful. I'm not going to deny anyone that pleasure. It would be wrong to do that. Two, and there's a practical point, if I'm training someone to be a professional musician, they graduate from my course and they haven't learned anything about Beethoven symphonies, how can they enter the world of work in classical music? The classical music industry assumes that everyone knows the canonic composers, and educators would be neglecting this if we abandon the canon completely. Music has always been great, it will always be great. So, as always, there aren't clear answers. The canon is a massively limiting thing. Further courses in music should point this out. And question what to do differently. The problem is that relatively few people who learn classical music ever get to this level. So, for most, classical music continues to be this little club of dead white guys, maybe with a couple of novelties thrown in for good measure. Awareness and discussion are what will get us out of it. Once again, echo from my previous video, if you like the music of canonic composers, great. I'm not here to tell you not to enjoy it. It's wonderful. And if you liked this video, you might also like to check out a podcast by two students that I've taught before. They've started a podcast called Down With The Patriarchy, which is trying to expand and question ideas of the canon. Their first podcast is on Florence Price. I'll put the link in the description. If you liked this video, check out my previous one, Genius in Classical Music. Uh, give a comment or like and subscribe. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thanks. Look in my eyes, what do you see? A cult of music. Of